Okay. As some of you know, I work with Davis Technologies and the traction control stuff. There have been a lot of posts out there about what, whether it makes you faster or not. There's lots of opinions. Um, I do not work for Davis Technology. I happen to use their products a lot, have worked with them a lot in the past, so I like them, but in no way is this a the opinion of Davis Technologies. Uh, there's a lot of po posts out there saying basically that it won't make you faster. I'm trying to find a way to describe from a control person's perspective, that's what I do and have done, is control things, how to explain it. Um, and uh, I've drawn a little little graph. It's extremely simple. There's a, a lot more to it than this, but I hope this helps some people understand my opinion, which, right or wrong, take it for what it's worth, is on the uh, use of the, these traction control devices in our type of racing, this small tire outlaw style um, drag racing. So anyway, went over to my whiteboard and drew a couple of graphs. The red line here represents your assumed traction limit when you're tuning a vehicle. What, that's basically what the track will hold. As a tuner, we put power in. We know, you know, we, it can be, I don't care what kind of, what kind of uh, power adder you use, but it, however you tune your vehicle, you tune it to be under that level of assumed traction limitation, okay? What the Davis box allows you to do is be more aggressive with your tune. Um, you know, over here, basically, you've got what the track will hold, you've got your tune up, you always got to be below that, okay? What I have personally done with the Davis stuff is gotten more aggressive. I've taken my power level and gone over what I think the uh, track will hold. And in, in this case, drawn a black line here that shows how the Davis box can adjust your power level as traction events happen. Basically, the Davis box will catch these events. Some people have alluded to the computer being faster. No shit. It's a lot faster. You know, we measure uh, the drive shaft in uh, eight, what is it, on the Davis ring. It's like eight times around the, uh, the actual ring. It has a magnet to pick up that, those traction events. Basically, if you can catch those events and pull the power back down, you're, in most cases, going to be above what you thought the traction limit of that track was. So it's, it's going to be more aggressive for you. What it won't do, and what everybody should know, is it won't fix a crappy tune-up or a shitty race car. But this is how it can make you faster. That computer is much smarter than your ass and your foot when you're driving the car and reacts in, I don't know what the hell, the, the corporate lingo, there's milliseconds and all that. It's much faster. So it's catching these, these events and pulling the power level down with that black line closer to the traction limit of the track. Let me ask you this, something else to consider. You know, that's kind of the basics of it. I hope that makes sense. I'm not real good at explaining stuff, so Maybe it, maybe it doesn't, but let me ask you this. If, if we're over here and we're blowing the tire off and there's nothing to kind of check it up besides your foot or your ass in the seat, is the traction, if there's something to catch it early, like milliseconds, is, is it possible that that, what we think, the assumed traction limit of that surfaces, is it possible that it's actually higher than that? So that whole curve, not just these, not just this, 
it's also possible that, that whole curve can be raised. So I, that's my basic opinion of it. I've used it. It works for me. Take it for what it's worth.